So in my talk, I mentioned four. I think there were four protocol or updates that I'm excited about. Um, one of them's already been merged into Lightning. It's called route blinding. Um, this is an important update to Lightning because right now, when you send someone a Lightning invoice, right, so like a QR code to pay you, they know who on the network they're paying. It tells them what node you are. It gives them your node ID. So if your node ID ever gets tied to who you are or your identity, maybe your Twitter account, people will know who the payment is going to, right, because that node ID doesn't change, really. Um, this new project is called, or this new feature is called route blinding. So basically what that means is that if you're receiving a payment on Lightning, you'll be able to hide who exactly is the final recipient of that payment. So you no longer have to tell people when you're receiving a payment what your node ID is, which is really exciting. So like we call it a uh, receiver privacy. So Send it's it. privacy improvements. Yeah, it's a big privacy improvement. That's right. Um, so that's cool. You can receive payments on Lightning, and whoever you ask to pay you doesn't know who they're sending the money to, which is great. One of the problems with the current like way of doing payments today is that a lot of people use a third party to help them with their lightning. So for example, like maybe you use and uh, this is maybe in the US it would like be Cash App, for example. I have a lightning balance there and if I someone wants me to pay them, I send the invoice to Cash App and they pay it for me basically. Whenever you send that invoice to someone like Cash App, they know who you're paying. And so they take that they they, I don't know if they do, but they have the opportunity to take that information and like hold on to it or send it to Chainalysis. So Chainalysis starts getting a good idea of who, you know, Cash App knows who you are, and Cash App has a record of who you're paying. Suddenly they have all the information about who you're paying, who paid who, and how much, and for what, because that has a description in it, right? So sending these invoices around and giving these invoices to third-party companies is really a, you tell everyone there is to know about what payments you're making. So you lose a lot of privacy by doing that. This route blinding um, feature that we were adding to, it'll, it'll really come out in the Bolt 12 stuff, which is one of the four things we'll talk about. Um, it really makes it such that you can now give your invoice to someone else, and they know maybe they'll know who you are, but they no longer know where the money is going to at their final destination. Sure. Which is cool. This is a new way of making Lightning invoices. One of the feature updates that it includes is doing the route blinding stuff. So the new version of invoices, you'll be able to do those route blinding things. The old version of, the current version of invoices we don't have, so we'll need to update for everyone to get these the route blinding capabilities, so to speak. Um, the other thing about Bolt 12 that I'm really excited about is something that um, Rusty, who made the proposal, calls offers. So right now, if you get a Lightning QR code, you can only pay it one time, for the most part. Um, if you want to have a QR code, maybe for a bar where you let people tip the servers or whatever, um, or if you want to have a um, just a QR code, like maybe you're selling something, you're a vendor, and you've got you're at a um, you're like selling stuff at a craft fair, and you want to have a QR code for every item you're selling. Now you, with Bolt 12 offers, you can do that. You could print out an offer, and everyone can scan the same QR code, but they get their own independent invoice that they can pay. So it's kind of a cool way of doing reusable invoices, but every time you make a payment, you get a good record of who paid what. And what's the advantage compared, for example, to LNURL? Yeah, so LNURL does a very, very similar thing. Mm -hmm. The biggest difference is what it takes to run LNURL versus to run a Bolt 12 up thing, right? So both of them require you to scan a QR code, then you have to go and find the person who made the QR code like through the network. The way that LNURL does that, it's kind of in the name, URL, right? Okay. URL is like a, a web technology, like the same thing we use for like browsing websites. Um, so it uses that existing infrastructure, web infrastructure, to help you go find who to ask for an invoice, right? So you get, a, you get an invoice back. But in order to do that, you have to be running like a web server. So you have to have access to running a web server in addition to running a Lightning node. Well, 12 says, okay, well, you're already running a Lightning node if you're receiving payments. What if we made it so that you don't have to have any additional requirements, like running a web server, setting up a web server? What if all you needed to do was run a Lightning node? And you could generate an offer on your Lightning node, which you're already doing, right? If you're accepting Lightning payments, you're already running a Lightning node. We'll make it such that then, when the person wants to pay you, rather than having their device 
call a web endpoint, which isn't very private. Like you can know what IP addresses are, so yeah. it's a way you can track people. Um, you have to have TLS certificates set up to do it. It's like a whole thing. What if instead you already have a Lightning node? What if we just use the existing Lightning node, which knows how to route payments or route messages? Payment is just a form of message between nodes. What if we have your node use Lightning Network to go talk to the node that's got the offer? Then they'll use the same Lightning Network to send you the invoice back, and then you pay the invoice again. Sure. So it's, a, it's basically like, hey, let's use the Lightning Network to send invoice information um, instead of having to rely on the web to do the same thing. Taproot was a big update that happened in 2021, I think, to the, so it was a layer one change. Yep. It changed the type of addresses that you're allowed to have on the main network. Um, Lightning was created before Taproot, so whenever you make channels, all the ways that you make a channel, like with a multi-sig, is using the old style of doing that. We want to update to make it use all the new signature stuff that came out with Taproot. One of the reasons for that is it improves on-chain privacy. So right now, when a Lightning channel closes, there's a very likely case that you can guess it's a Lightning okay. channel, right? Um, this will make that go away. Like it's one of, we'll remove one of the signals, so to speak. I mean, when your channel closes, it's no longer open, but that does kind of leave a history print on the chain. We want to remove that because, like as we talked about earlier, you know, chain analysis is trying to get as much information as possible about the um, the network. So if we can make it such that these lightning channel opens and closes look like any other payment happening on the layer one, it removes the ability to be able to look at the blockchain and really understand who's moving money around and why and who's involved in it. So that's a really exciting thing. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about it because um, I think it's getting close. I know there's two projects, two of the implementations working on it right now. Um, I haven't been following up with like how they, how it's progressing, but I think they're getting very close to having like a first working copy, which is super exciting. Um, and then the fourth project that I talked about is also kind of related to on-chain stuff for Lightning. Mm -hmm. It's called splicing. And the way that splicing works is that it basically right now, if you have a Lightning channel, and let's say it has like one Bitcoin in it, just as an example, you have a Bitcoin big channel. What if you've like sent all of your payments to the other side and you want to put another Bitcoin in the channel so you can pay this, the person on the other side, right? And at the same time, they want to take that one Bitcoin out and move it into a different channel, right? Because they've received it all on this side and now they need to reload another channel, right? So you both want to like kind of reload your Bitcoin on your channels. You don't want to send the payment back for whatever reason. You want to move Bitcoin around or maybe you want to like make it bigger or smaller. Right now, the only way to do that to put more Bitcoin into Lightning, into existing channels, is to close the existing channel and reopen a new one. And that takes two transactions. So you have to pay on-chain fees for two Bitcoin transactions. Also, you have to pay two, you have to pay for two Bitcoin transactions for every channel that you want to change. So let's say you wanted to move some money out of one channel into another because this one's not being routed very much. But this one is, and so you want to get better like use of your Bitcoin in the Lightning Network by reallocating it to a different place, right? Um, Splicing is really great because it cuts down on the cost to move capital around on Lightning. Um, so now, instead of having to do four transactions, two channel closes and two reopens to move the funds, you can do it all in one. So it's like, a, you know, at the worst case, you save 50% on fees, best cases you can save even more, right? Depending sure. on how much you're reallocating at the same time. So we're really excited about it. The other cool thing about it is when you close and open a channel, you can't send payments during that period when it's closed and open. Slicing is called such because you're able to keep sending payments through the yeah. channel while it's being resized. So this is great because it, you know, it preserves your uptime. It means you can still be earning payments for the capital that's in the channel already. Plus, you get to re move things around um, much, much cheaper than the current protocol lets you. So, hopefully, I know that um, maybe I shouldn't say this because I feel like I'll jinx it. But like, um, uh, async is like the French project. They're um, yeah. they're gonna have a first version of splicing, is my understanding, in their next release. Okay. So it's already like it's coming. And then for Core Lightning, we're in the process of reviewing our implementation. Um, 
Dusty Damon has been working very hard on getting it done for Core Lightning, and hopefully we'll have it. In, we'll also have it in our next release, which is in August. So. Yeah, I do. I think like, and it's not even see it. Like Fediment has built this. Fediment, I think, really kind of showed showed us how it could be done because they spent a lot of time and energy building out their lightning gateways okay. such that if you're in a Fediment, Fediment's kind of like being in a community bank. You kind of have your own shitcoin for yeah. that community bank, right? It's an issued shitcoin, but it's only for that community bank, yeah. right? Um, I'm gonna get in trouble for calling it that, that's fine. <laughs> um, but then if you want to take it and exchange it, like maybe you've got your balance, so you can hold a balance in this like, this community coin, and then, but you can't really pay anyone outside of your community with that. It's not very useful, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, how do you like actually make that useful to the wider network? The idea they came up with is what if we have these lightning operators that for a fee, kind of like a money changer, will take your community coin and pay, so you'll give them the lightning invoice. This is why route blinding is important because you're going to be giving your invoices to someone yeah. else to help you pay, right? Um, they'll pay the invoice on your behalf and then whenever they get proof that they've paid it, they can exchange it for some coins that you have in the community. So I think this is a really great example. They're one of the first ones to build these lightning gateways that act as this interface how you can send your money to someone else out over lightning, even though like how you're holding your balance is in something other than whatever the lightning network yeah. balance is. I really hope that, I think, I think like they're working on adding similar things to the lightning network. Like they just introduced like the bolt swap service. Mm -hmm. um, let's you do that, so you'll be able to like have things in liquid and then swap them out to Lightning to pay things or use Lightning to pay in. This is really nice for like these projects, like Fediment and Liquid, I think, because a lot of people talk about like, well, how do I get my money out? I have to go to a federation and ask them to like give me my money back. Sure. When you have these Lightning gateways, all of a sudden you can like get payments out through um, out through your. You can like have your balance and then move it out through Lightning, right? 